بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم إني أفتتح الثناء بحمدك أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير خلق الله محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطائرين المعصومين Dear brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May Allah سبحانه وتعالى accept all our ibadah our fasting our duha, our hams giving, and all types of ibadat that we engage ourselves in in this element. Amin, ya Rabbil Alameen. In our last sitting, we discuss with ourselves the social benefits of fasting, whereby we take a look at the popular verse regarding the obligation of fasting in the Ulu Quran. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. O ye who believe, kutiba alaykum as-siyam. We have made fasting obligatory upon you. Just as we made it obligatory upon those before you. La'allakum tattakun. And the reason for that is that so that you may learn self-restraint. We now try to stretch that path. Learning self-restraint, it actually cuts across various aspects of our lives. And in the last sitting, we take a look at the social aspect of our life, whereby one of the reasons of the obligation of fasting, according to Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salam, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his wisdom wants the rich to feel the pain of hunger so that they can actually feel what the poor normally go through on daily basis. The pain of hunger. So that if they do that, number one, they will feel compassionate to the poor. So we take a look at those in the last uh, sitting. And today, inshallah, we want to take a look at the aspect of our individual life with regards to how we eat and so on and so forth. So today we shall be looking at the health benefit of fasting. Allah has made it obligatory upon us. Again, why? La allakum tatakun, so that we may learn self restraint. Let's take a look at it from this angle. You can imagine you and I. Out of 12 months in a year, out of 12 months, that is in a year, we wine and dine, we eat, drink for almost 11 months. It is only one month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made fasting, compulsory upon us. There is a book written by uh, Professor Obaleye in University of Ilori in Nigeria. The title of the book is Eat Little, Die Little. Eat Little, Die Little. There is absolutely no doubt that bulk majority of the diseases we are experiencing today, inflammation, uh, 
this and that, obesity, a, lo a whole lot of diseases are related to what we eat and what we drink. Look at the title of the book again. Eat little, die little. So a lot of things we are facing regarding our health issues comes from what we eat and what we drink. And if you continue like that for 11 months, definitely, definitely we're going to experience a whole lot of health-related problems. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his wisdom asks us to de detoxify all the junks we keep on feeding into our body for a month. He asks us to fast so that fasting will give us that self-restraint in terms of what we consume. But unfortunately today, a lot of people are fasting very, very wrongly. Why do I say so? At the time of Iftar or at the time of Sahur, you see people, the way we eat, as if there is no tomorrow. What kind of fasting is that? Allah actually wants us to feel the pain of hunger so that that pain of hunger we do that detoxification in our body what we have fed our body for 11 months you know in this particular period of fasting we are actually expected to reduce our cost cost of food to reduce what we eat so that fasting can actually do that physical benefit into our body. There is a particular website. It's a reliable website. It is called uh, healthline.com. Healthline.com. If we take a look at their, uh, the section on nutrition, there is a particular area there that talks about benefits of fasting. Benefits of fasting. And about eight different benefits that, is, that are scientifically proven has been given in that particular website. Again, healthline.com. Healthline.com. We can take a look at it. So, number one. According to science, they've been able to study fasting. For example, what they normally do in their experiments, they use, for example, rabbits or mice. They try to make them fast and they will have a control that is the one they are feeding. You know, all these uh, animals, for, uh, for example, rabbits or mice, they have nearly the same physiology with human beings. So, without further ado, number one benefit of fasting, according to this website, is that it promotes blood sugar control. It promotes blood sugar control by reducing insulin resistance. If we fast the way we are supposed to fast again again it's not that at the time of iftar or at the time of sahur we now eat as if there is no tomorrow no fasting actually wants us to control our diet to control our food and if we do this number one according to scientific facts is going to promote blood sugar control by reducing insulin resistance. Number two, fasting promotes better health. It promotes better health. It, it gives you a better health by fighting inflammation. By fighting inflammation. 
I myself have experienced inflammation before Ramadan and after some days of fasting, it's gone. It's gone for good. That is what fasting does. So number two, fasting promotes better health by fighting inflammation. Number three benefit of fasting, according to this website, is that fasting may enhance heart health. And how is it going to do that? By improving blood pressure, by improving triglyceride and cholesterol level. That's why you can imagine if you are fat, one of the best ways for you to reduce your fat is by fasting. It will control your cholesterol level. And with this, if you improve your blood pressure, if you improve your triglyceride, and if you improve your cholesterol level, definitely, definitely, it will enhance your heart health. So that is number three. Number four benefit of fasting is that it may boost brain function and prevent uh, neurodegenerative disorders. My brothers and sisters, this is not even a rocket science. If you eat and eat and eat and drink to the brim, your brain will find it difficult to think. Your brain will find it difficult to think properly. But in, during fasting, you can observe the way your brain functions. It functions much more better. So therefore, fasting boosts brain function and prevents neurodegenerative disorder. Number five, fasting aids weight loss by limiting calorie intake and boosting metabolism. Just like I observed the other time, one of the best way, one of the best natural way for you to reduce your weight is by fasting. And number six, fasting increases growth hormone secretion, which is vital for growth, metabolism, weight loss, and muscle strength. Allahu Akbar. No wonder that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made fasting obligatory on us. He actually wants us to learn that self-control, the way we eat, the way we consume, the way we drink. La Allah kum tattakun. And number seven, fasting could extend longevity. You want to live longer. Stop consuming too much food. Take into fasting. You will definitely live longer. This is scientific fact. Remember the book I told you the other time that it was it was written by a professor in university of at University of Illinois. Eat little, die little. You want to. Increase your longevity. Take into fasting. Fasting will do that for you. And lastly, number eight benefit of fasting. Fasting may aid in cancer prevention and increase the effectiveness of chemotherapy. Allahu Akbar. Wallah, human being, if Allah made something obligatory on us, the fact that we don't know the philosophy behind it, the benefits of that thing. As a Muslim, the best thing for us is to do Teslim, to obey and do that thing. If our brain capacity is able to rationalize the reason why Allah has made deeds, Allah has made it obligatory on us, fine. If our brain capacity has not been able to, 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 to get the reason, definitely our Lord 
is so beneficial, is so merciful to us. That is the reason why he asks us to do that thing. So dear brothers and sisters in, in Islam, let's try to observe that self-restraint in this period of fasting by controlling our food, by controlling our drinks, and a whole lot of things that we consume so that we can actually achieve all these benefits, all these health benefits of fasting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure the sick. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala improve our health. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadah in these elements of Ramadan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu.